We've come to our final module on functions. In this module, we're going to look specifically at exponential and logarithmic functions. As you can see from our outline, we have quite a bit of work ahead of us. We're going to start with the basics. What is an exponential function? What is the qualifying criteria? How do I write it algebraically? What does a graph look like? There are exponential growth models and decay models, increasing and decreasing functions, and we're going to look at both of those. Once we've got that figured out, we'll move on to its inverse, or function that undoes it, called the logarithmic function. So recall, other pairs of inverse functions are things like adding and subtracting, or multiplying and dividing, squaring and square root. Here, we're looking specifically at exponential and logarithmic. We'll spend a little time converting back and forth between exponential form and logarithmic form. We'll be looking at the um, graphs of logarithmic functions. We'll be looking at a few properties that allow us to condense logarithmic statements into a more simple statement or expanding it, if needed, into a longer statement that we can evaluate the pieces individually. Once we have all of those basics down, we're going to start using that to actually do some solving of equations. We'll ha have a couple methods to solve exponential functions, and we'll have a couple methods to solve the logarithmic functions or equations. Once we know how to solve the equations, we can finally put it to use with our application problems. So we'll have a section that's all about modeling and applications, and the last section is about using the technology to create a scatter plot. And then once we see the scatter plot, determining if it's an exponential or a logarithmic growth problem, and then having the technology get us the regression equation so we can then make predictions and do further analysis. Before I move on, this colorful picture here might have drawn your attention. It is E. coli bacteria under an electron microscope. You are asking, what does that have to do with algebra? Well, it turns out that bacteria growth can be modeled by an exponential function. So you will probably see some bacteria problems in your homework. Okay, different types of growth. We can have linear growth, exponential growth, or logarithmic growth. Linear growth is steady and constant amount of change. For instance, you might be growing by 100 people every month or two rabbits every day. Whatever the case is, there is a constant amount of growth over time. Exponential growth is a constant rate of growth over time. An example you're familiar with there is cell growth. We start as one cell, but then that one cell doubles and becomes two. That's 100% growth. Then those two become four. Again, that's 100% growth rate. Those four become eight and so on and so on. So it's not the amount that is constant. It is the percent of growth that is constant. That's what an exponential function is. So it looks like there's not a lot of change at first, but then suddenly it is a huge amount of change as far as the number over time. To get an inverse function graph, we switch the x's and y. So if you take all the ordered pairs on that orange graph and you flip them, you will get the green graph and that's our logarithmic function. Now you notice they're both increasing function, they're both representing growth, but it's a different type of growth. So the logarithmic function is modeling rapid growth initially that levels off. One last slide. In real life, we have limiting factors. So exponential growth, is a nice model, but it's, it only works for a certain period of time. If I want to look really long term, I have to think about the limiting factors, limited amount of space, or food, or other natural resources. And we'll hit something called a carrying capacity. So it's, it's you can't grow indefinitely. If you have bacteria in a petri dish, there's going to be a maximum number that that can hold. So there's a carrying capacity. If you look at the second graph there, you'll see that it starts out almost like an exponential function, but then it kind of flips and twists and looks more like the logarithmic function. That's called logistic growth. You'll read about that and do a few problems of that in your very last section of homework. I hope you find this module interesting because of all the real life applications involved. If you have any questions, as always, never hesitate to ask.